Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this satisfying grass growing effect. This video is part of the Dynamic Paint series where we're taking a look at the four different surface types. Last week we looked at Displace and now this week we're taking a look at Weight. Now weight painting is also known as vertex groups and they are extremely versatile in Blender. How they work is you basically assign a set of vertices a value between 0 and 1. After assigning those values, you can then use it to influence almost anything in Blender, including modifiers, simulations, materials, rigging, particle systems, geometry nodes, and so much more. There are many ways to create a vertex group, but some of the most common ones include manually painting in weight paint mode. You can also go into edit mode and select and manually assign them in the vertex panel, or the topic of this video, dynamic paint. Now before we get into the video, if you want to grab this blend file and all the other blend files that I've ever created on this channel, the link is in the description to check out the Patreon. So over here in Blender, we're first going to delete the default cube, and then let's press Shift A, add in a mesh, and then we'll add in an icosphere. Now before we do anything else, we want to open up this panel at the bottom and set the number of subdivisions up to around 7. When working with vertex groups, we want to make sure we have a lot of geometry to work with. Next, if we open up the Properties tab by hitting N, let's set the dimensions right here to around 3.5. Then we're going to add in a brush object because this is currently our canvas. We also need a brush, so I'm going to press Shift A and add in a UV sphere. We're going to set the dimensions of this sphere down a bit to around 0.5. Then in Edit Mode, we'll go into Front View. In Edit Mode right here, we're going to move this over to the top right corner. You can see here we left the origin point right at the center because now when we rotate, this is going to rotate and paint on our canvas, which is exactly what we want. We're going to press Ctrl A and apply the scale so these numbers go back to 1. Let's do the same thing for our icosphere as well. Ctrl A and apply the scale. With our UV sphere right here, it's going to be very uniform if we use this as the brush. So let's give it some more randomness by adding a displacement modifier. So over here in the modifier tab, let's click add modifier deform and choose displace. Let's create a new texture and then for the strength we're going to go down to around 0.5. Over in the texture panel let's switch the type from image or movie over to clouds. Now here's what our brush looks like now you can see it's a lot more random. For the size of this texture right here we're going to go up to around 0.4 so we get slightly bigger bumps and that is looking pretty good. Now, you might notice if we rotate this around, it's still going to be pretty uniform because the displace modifier is not moving around. Now, there's a trick that we can do to actually animate this displace texture. We're going to press Shift A and add in an empty and then a plain axis. And what we're going to do is have this object move as the animation plays, and that's going to influence the displace modifier. So with the empty selected over in the location, we're just going to create a new driver. So type in hashtag frame divided by 50 and 50 is the speed. If you want it to move slower, you can go higher or faster, you can go lower. But 50 I found works pretty good. So now when we play this, the empty is going to move constantly over to the right and just forever until the animation stops. Then what we can do is with the UV sphere selected in the modifier tab, we can change the coordinates from local over to object. And then of course, for the object, we're going to select the empty. So you can see now it's moving around as the empty is also moving. That is looking pretty good. So now we're going to animate this moving around randomly all over our icosphere. To do this, we're going to open up the graph editor. So split this view and then switch it over to the graph editor right here. And then with the UV sphere selected, we'll hit K and then add in a rotation keyframe. Over here in the graph editor, we can open up these windows and select the X rotation. Then we're going to add in a noise modifier to this. So in the properties tab, go over to the modifier panel, select add modifier and choose noise. Now here's what our noise pattern looks like and it currently it's way too much. You can see this is moving like crazy. So here are some of the values that we're going to change. First off for the scale, we're going to go up to 150. For the strength of this, we're going to go up to around 25. So now when we play this, we can see this is the effect that we're getting. And that is looking a lot better. Now it doesn't look that good right now and that's because we need to copy this setting over to the other axes. So we're going to click on that button right there to copy the modifier. Then we'll select the Y and paste it in. 
Now right now it's using the same noise pattern. You can see the X and the Y are exactly the same. So what you're gonna to want to do is change the offset up a little bit. Let's just go up to 500. We'll do the same thing for the Z. We're gonna paste that in. And this time we're gonna go up to 1000 for the offset. So now when we restart and play it, here is our brush moving all the way around. And that is perfect. That looks pretty good. Now one more thing before we add the other brushes, we're gonna jump over to the physics tab, select dynamic paint, change the type from canvas over to brush, and then add in a new brush. So now when we duplicate this object, it's gonna have all of these modifiers already in place. So what we can do is just press shift D on this, and then for the Z rotation, we're again gonna change the offset up by 500. So this time we're gonna go up to 1500. We'll select the Y, we're gonna go up to 2000, and then the X will go up to 2500. We're gonna do this another time, so Shift D. So now we have three brushes going all the way around in very random uh, movements, which is very nice. And we're gonna duplicate all of these brushes one more time, and this time we're gonna scale them down a bit. So what I'm gonna do is select all three of them, press Shift D to duplicate it, so now that we have six brushes. Now with these three new brushes selected, we'll go into edit mode, now before we do anything else, we're gonna scroll over here, change the pivot point to individual origins, and then we'll just scale them down just a little bit to get some smaller brushes. So something like that will be pretty good. Then from here, again, we're gonna need to change all of these offsets. So starting out at the top here, I'm just gonna go with a value of, we'll go with 5,000. Then on the Y, we'll go with 5,500. And then we'll just repeat that process going all the way down. All right, there we go. We've added all of the brushes. So now when we play the animation, we have a lot more randomness all throughout it and it is looking pretty good. Now from here, we're ready to set up the dynamic paint. I'm gonna go ahead and close off this panel. We're not gonna need it anymore. Then with the canvas selected, we'll turn on dynamic paint, leave the type on canvas and then add this in. For the sub steps, we need to go up to a value of 10 because these brushes are moving very quickly. So we're gonna to need to drag that up to make sure everything is nice and smooth. For the surface type, we're gonna switch it over to the weight option. And then we're also gonna turn on dissolve. This will allow the weight paint to actually dissolve over time. Now for the time value, this is how fast it's gonna dissolve. And this is kind of up to you on what you want. I found that a value between like 50 to 75 works pretty good. So I'm gonna go with a value of 50. Over in the output tab, we're gonna hit that plus sign to export all of the data to this DP underscore weight group. And then if you notice that this is grayed out, that's because you need to save your project. So go ahead, save your project, and then you'll be able to bake this in. Just to make sure that this is working properly, we're gonna switch it over to the weight paint mode, restart and play this, and you can see this is working and it is looking pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead, save our project, restart the timeline, and then click on bake. Now we're ready for the particle system. With our icosphere selected, we're gonna jump over to the particle system tab, create a new one, switch the type from emitter over to hair, and then turn on advanced. For the number of hair particles, we're gonna go up to 10,000. The hair length right here, we need to go much lower, all the way down to around 0.1. We're then gonna open up the physics panel, and underneath the Brownian setting here, we're gonna bring this up just a little bit to give us some more randomness in our hair. For this value, let's go with 0.05. Underneath the render tab, you can turn on B-spline and bring the render steps up to around four. This is gonna smooth it out in the render. And then in the viewport display, you can also bring the strand steps up a bit to give us some nice smooth hair. Finally, we're gonna open up the children option, turn on simple. And now what this will do is for every one particle, there's now gonna be 100 particles. Now this is a bit too much. We're gonna go down to around 20. Same for the display amount, go down to around 20. And then also underneath the clumping, we're gonna bring this down. Cause if you look at real grass, you're gonna notice that the grass kind of clumps at the bottom and then spreads outwards. And that's exactly what this setting does. So we're gonna go with a value of negative 0.7. And then obviously the last thing we need to do is open up the vertex groups. And then underneath the length option, we're gonna select DP underscore weight, which is our dynamic paint simulation. Now when we play this, this is the effect that we get. So as the paint dissolves, you can see the length of our hair particles starts to disappear. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind when working with dynamic paint and particles, if you have a dynamic paint simulation where things are moving around, density is not gonna work. You can see here, if I select density, it doesn't change anything, nothing really happens. And that's because it's just currently bugged at the moment, it doesn't dynamically stimulate the amount of density in the particles. So the only thing that works is the length option here. Just something to keep in mind that it doesn't work at the moment. Now we're ready to create the material. So let's come up to the top here and we're gonna split this view and switch it over to the shader editor right here. With the icosphere selected, we'll create a new material. And now for this video, I'm only gonna use a base color with a roughness set to zero. But I do want to show how you can add that weight paint that we created with the dynamic paint to this material. And it's actually very easy. All you really need to do is just press shift A, go over to input and then add in an attribute node. Then in the name here, it's going to be DP underscore weight. If we go into the rendered view, this is not gonna work in EB, so we do need to switch over to cycles. So with this attribute selected, if you have the node or regular add-on, you can control shift left click on it. And this basically is a mask, which you can then use to plug into the emission. You can add in two different textures. It's very easy with this node here. And I'll, I'll show one more example of how to do that. You're gonna add in a mix color, and this is going to be the factor. So now if we take a look at the principal shader, this top input is where all of the white is on that mask, and then the bottom is where the paint actually is. So if we wanted the paint trail to be like a green color, we could switch it over to the green color, and now you can see right where the grass is, it's a green color. Or you could use a texture here if you wanted to. The other thing that you can do, like I mentioned, is use the emission right here. If you wanted the parts where the grass is to be glowing, all you need to do is take the color and then plug it into the strength right here and then change this color to whatever you want. Then if you wanted to control the brightness of this, you can add in a converter math node, switch this over to multiply, and now this bottom value controls how bright it's gonna be. So if we go up to like 15 or something, we have a very bright streak of glowing paint just like that. I don't think this looks good for this scene, but you can apply this technique to so many other applications inside Blender. So for now, I'm just going to remove both of these and just use the base color, maybe darken it just slightly. And now for the grass material, we're gonna jump over to the material tab, create a new material. We'll call this material grass. Then what we're gonna do is over here in the principal shader, we're gonna add in an input and then a curves info node. The reason we're adding this is because we have an intercept value. So all we have to do now is just add in a converter color ramp. We'll take the intercept, plug it into the factor, and then the color into the base color right here. We're gonna add in a new handle by hitting that plus sign, change this over to a green color, something like that. Then we'll add in another one, and this is gonna be a darker green color. So just drag this down a bit. And then to actually apply it to the particles, we need to jump over to the particle system tab. Underneath the render, we're gonna change the material from 01 to the grass material right here. And once we've done that, we can see it's created and that looks pretty good. I think for the very end, I'm gonna change it to like a yellowish color, something like that. And that will look pretty good. As for the lighting for the rest of the scene, we're gonna jump over to the world settings here and use an environment texture just like this. Click on open and then navigate to where the HDRs are. If you wanna use the same one I'm using, I'll put the link in the description. It's this one right here, the Photo Studio 01, and then click on open image. For the strength of the world, we can bring this up just a little bit so we get a brighter icosphere. And then finally, I did add transparency to the background and that's underneath the film section right here. You can turn on transparent. For the camera, we're gonna jump into the front view and then hit Control Alt Numpad Zero to snap the camera to place. You can select it and then just drag it backwards till you get the full icosphere in frame. Now, one thing I did notice when I was testing for this tutorial is a lot of the frames on our icosphere will have very, very tiny particles where there is no weight. You can see here, if we zoom in, all of these particles don't really look that good. So what we're gonna do to help prevent all of those from appearing in the render is just add in a new icosphere and scale it up slightly bigger than this current one. So what I'll do is press Shift A, add in an icosphere, making sure these subdivisions is also set to seven. And then underneath the dimensions tab, let's go up to a value of 3.52. And then we'll see if that is what we need. 
We can go down just a little bit to 3.51, and we can see those particles start to appear, so I'm just gonna leave it at 3.52. And that will help prevent any unwanted tiny particles throughout the render. And then of course we need to jump over to the material tab and then add in that material right here, which is the glossy material. So we're gonna jump over to the render scene panel, set the max samples to around 50, save your project and just do a quick render. Here is our render and now let's add in a background. So I'm gonna escape that and jump over to the compositing workspace, select use nodes. Then to add in a viewer node, we can hit control shift and left click on the render layers. We'll drag this down so we don't have that. So we have the full view and then you can press V a couple times to zoom out. To add in a background, we need to press shift A, go over to color, mix, and then use an alpha over node. Make sure this is in the bottom socket. We'll control shift left click on that. And now this image, this color is what the background will be. So I'm just gonna drag this down just a little bit. If you also want to add a vignette around this to make sure the focus is on the center, um, you can do that pretty easily by adding in a mask and then an ellipse mask. We'll take a look at this. If you drag the width, here is where you're gonna set the size of that vignette. So we're gonna drag this up a bit until we get something like this or so. Then we need to blur all of those corners. So press Shift A, add in a filter blur and then a normal blur node. We can change it over to the fast mode, relative, and then Y. And both of these values are the percentages of the blur. So we're gonna go up to around 15. Then to apply it to here, we need to add in another color mix and then a mixed color. Take the image, plug it into the bottom input, and switch this over to multiply to get rid of all of the white values, but keep the black values, and there we go. And then this factor controls how much of an effect that will have, so we're just gonna bring this down so it's more subtle, somewhere around 0.6. But there we go. Now all you have to do is just render out an animation and then you'll have a really satisfying grass growing effect. Thank you very much for watching. And if you wanna grab the blend file, I'll put the link to my Patreon down in the description. And if you have other ideas for tutorials you would like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. That's gonna do it. I'll see you guys in the next one.